Hey y'all, long time no see. Uh, today we're doing the first hike of, or the first adventure really of 2024. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I want to do this for a long little while. Um, we're going to be hiking up to Sarver's cabin on top of the mountain and uh, check out an old homestead. And apparently it's haunted too. And uh, we'll tell you some stories about that when we get up here. But yeah, I'm real excited. Looks like a pretty good little hike up, so we're gonna get started. I already got a late start, it's about two o'clock. Um, so yeah, join me on this little adventure and uh, I hope you enjoy it. We're headed up top up there, the Appalachian Trail goes across that ridge and here's the trail to the cabin. We're going to be staying in a shelter up there tonight, so you listen to my heavy breathing out of shape. But uh, we're going to get up there and the trail hasn't even started. The trip hasn't even started, so we'll see how it goes. It is straight up through there. That line. It's a nice little maintained trail though. I saw some shoe prints back there a second ago. Some people been up here recently. I had to stop and catch my breath for just a minute. Out of shape. I did hear one weird thing up here. And it's probably just my mom playing tricks. But I thought I heard a woman's voice on up the ridge a little bit. But the trail does go up through there. And there might be somebody hiking on here. I don't see any cars or anything when I pull it in. But <sighs> spooky. We'll see when we get up there. Well, we made it. I didn't think you wanted to hear me huffing and puffing up the trail there, so I didn't film a whole lot coming up. But uh, we're here at the Appalachian Trail uh, Sarver Hollow Shelter, and we're going to stay all night. And we will talk about the history of this area and stuff like that. Um, the old Sarver Homestead, we walked past coming up, and we'll go down there and get water here in a minute, and we'll uh, take a look at it. It's beautiful, the rock stacks and uh, the old ruins and stuff like that. But... Uh, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, we're gonna check out the logbook and stuff in there and uh, build a little fire and uh, I'm excited. I had cabin fever for a while, so it's always good to get out and I uh, hope y'all will join me. <clears throat> I thought we'd read some of these log entries here. We'll have to sign it before we leave, but uh, looks like the last person that was here was on 2 3 24, it was just a couple days ago. So they got behind schedule yesterday and had to not hike the last two miles by the Cairns. They were very spooky and it was very cold. Jay, there's some uh, Cairns down there. What well, Cairns? But uh, they, this whole like woods up through here, right down near the homestead, weren't woods back in the 1800s when they settled the cabin. Uh, they probably were woods, but then they cleared them off to make uh, apple orchards and uh, plant their crops and stuff. So you see all these like stones stacked up everywhere. It was really just them moving the stones out of the field and stacking them up in place so they could go farm and do whatever on the fields. Uh, so it was very cool. That place is super cool. And uh, I was going to camp down there, but I've never camped in an Appalachian Trail shelter before, and I thought it'd be neat and uh, don't really have to worry about anybody camping out, I don't think, they're not here with me, uh, which would be fine if they did. But um, So I figured we'd just camp out here tonight and uh, be kind of cool. I... I I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, I've never done it before. So it's always new and an adventure to do something like that for me. So, uh, but yeah, let's read through some more of these uh, log entries. Uh, I'll see what we can get here. It's amazing to think for me, like how many people use these shelters just on a yearly basis when they're hiking the Appalachian Trail and through hikes or just coming up here. Like, it's just. I don't know. Y'all are a different breed of people. Uh, <laughs> like, it, it, I mean, it's fascinating. One day I'd like to do it, maybe when I retire, but uh, just getting up here was tough on me, so I couldn't imagine walking 2,000 miles or however long it is. It's just, you guys are wild, but uh, it's very cool. I think it's super cool. So, there's a lot of people that made entries in here. <clears throat> Looks like June and stuff, like the peak trail times and when it was warm. That's actually pretty funny, a lot of them. Let's read some more of them here in a minute, but. Um, 
Yeah, I haven't seen anything spooky in here yet from anybody talking about they're not. Uh, everything's just good. A lot of people say it's peaceful and uh, yeah. There's an old fella named uh, Cheesefoot. <laughs> That's what my new name is going to be. I got my bed set up in the shelter. Uh, here's the dish for the night. Nice little area here. Got my little laying room. And should be a good night. I think it's supposed to get like 26 degrees tonight or something. So not super cold, but I uh, brought a bunch of jackets to stay warm. And I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm so glad to get out in the mountains and uh, get to camp out a little bit. It is uh, 5.15 right now. We got about another hour and a half until the sun goes down. It's already starting to set. Kind of over those mountains over there. So I'm going to drink the rest of the water I got. Then we'll go to the spring down here and uh, see if we can't get some water. I got like one of those uh, filtration system things from, uh, for Christmas. I want to use that. I've never used it before. Uh, so I'm excited about that. We'll get us some water and uh, come back up here and make a fire and talk a little bit more about the area history and all that good stuff so uh we'll see you in a second i ain't gonna lie to y'all um i'm a little bit glad that we have just a little bit of cell service up here uh i haven't done this since i was a kid and uh <laughs> especially camping by yourself in the middle of a supposedly haunted place so um i always worry about my kids when i'm off i like getting out where there's no cell phone signal sometimes but i always wonder if there's like an emergency or something like that that's going to happen while i'm away so gives me a little bit of peace of mind but i'm still going to sit here and enjoy enjoy myself enjoy nature um so yeah it's already starting to get a little cold up here a little chilly i'm gonna bring my headlamp with me and take the rest of my water and put it in here so we can make coffee later and uh, then we'll go down the spring and get some more water test out my filtration system that's not enough all right, well, we'll get some more water anyway. The uh, Appalachian Trail Clubs do a lot of work up here, keeping it maintained. And I haven't seen one piece of trash up here since I've been up here, which is rare when you're walking in the National Forest. So they do a good job of maintaining everything up here. And, and kudos to them. They get out, they don't get paid for it. Just a bunch of volunteers that like nature and enjoy being outside. Me y'all are listening to this video. We thank you so much. about coming down here at night filming but uh i'm a little bit of a chicken so i don't know if we're gonna do that or not airplane up there if you see me those trees but he's up there this is the upper spring where you can get water looks a little stagnant i mean i'm sure it flows out and probably fine once you treat it but uh Man, it's beautiful stone line, a uh, little spring there. I can hear it flowing through here. See it down there, but uh, I think I'm gonna go to the lower one where it's flowing a little bit more. There's some down there flowing, but look, look a little better down here at the bottom. So. Secondary water source. And plus it'll give us a chance to go down here and look for, uh, or go by those cairns again. I don't think I filmed them on the way up in the cabin. So. I'm glad I bought, brought a bunch of underlayers and stuff like that because it was like in the 50s today, but it's getting a little chilly. That wind's blowing a little bit. But here's one piece of the cabin. Um, I don't know if that was like a. I don't think this was the actual cabin because the the ruins of the chimneys are down there. This might have been a little corn crib or a little hog pen there. Um, but 
apparently people used to stay in here before that shelter was built and uh they'd stay in here until it fell down i guess trees and just old age but i mean it's a beautiful structure you can still see that's an old square nail there um well maybe a lot it looks like around there it looked like a square nail at first but um you can definitely see where they cut it old logs people put nails up over the years and do stuff to try to do it but uh, it's just amazing i'm a sucker for old structures like that ruins and it's crazy to me that somebody could eke up a living on top of this mountain um, but people do it people still do it today so here's the chimneys got some old pictures i'll show at the uh in the middle or the end maybe right now but uh we'll show you what it looked like before the ruins i mean it's just gorgeous I, I it's just i don't know crazy to me sorry i'm speechless but uh onward i can sit here all day and look at this Look at all these Karen, they call them Karen, stone paws up through here. Imagine how back breaking that would be to have to lift one of those stones, 75, 100 pounds plus for some of them and just stack them up here just so you can farm and have an orchard up here. I get tired when I have to lift like 50 pounds once. This was like an all day job, multiple days and weeks to do all this. I mean, the video here doesn't do it justice. They're everywhere. They're there. They're all the way down through here. Up through there. Here's a little rock wall, I guess. Through here. You can tell that there's a remnants of an old road running up through here. Well, it's just beautiful. And when I say they're everywhere, they're down through here and... beautiful i heard this water i thought it was just like a little i i did a little bit of mapping with it but i thought it was just a little spring and not much water but you can tell why they built it here because there's you know spring and flowing water all the way down the mountain through here but you could hear this coming for like ever it sounded like a waterfall actually but it's weird somebody must have gathered up the brush it's like a Blair Witch Project top thing. Guess they just got it off the trail here. I guess. I don't know. Anyway, we won't think about that. <laughs> Let's get down here and see if we can get some water. Probably easier way to do this, and uh, it's just a little pouch, so it's not doesn't hold a lot of water. But uh, it's the first time, so give me some slack. Oh, this guy on there. Don't spill it. Getting a little hungry, ain't gonna lie to you. Let's see, flow this way, so I'm tied on here. You're probably making fun of me. Don't know what I'm doing, and really, I don't. So, open it up. I think we're gonna have to get multiple, multiple tries here. So, let's just squeeze it gently and maybe. Oh, there it goes. Look a little milky there, I guess. Yeah, it's running clear. I guess that was the first time. It's pretty cool. I probably didn't even get that camera shot, honestly. But we try, we try. I 
We get a full bottle. Come back to you. We fill this one up for good measure too, just to say that we did. Hopefully some high quality H2O, not full majority of it. Tastes good, but I don't mean anything. I heard something call from the top of the ridge up there. So uh, I guess we'll start our uh, sitting back, see what happens. I think I heard a call, it might have been a person. You never know. Home sweet home up there for the night. I'm excited. Hope y'all are too. Well, this can be a scary place for people, um, which we're not really in the wilderness. I mean, there's a nice little shelter here. It's not like we're backcountry camping. Um, I have like trails up there. But um, some people are just terrified of the woods. And I think a lot of that's propagated by stuff they see online and saying that, uh, you know, don't go on Appalachia Woods at night. Uh, something will get you. Or like there's stuff that people don't talk about. And, uh, not normally the case there's some weird things out there um but not if you go out and just camp or something like that i don't really think you have much danger of running into anything be more afraid of humans um than anything so instead of like creatures in night or something like that i think there's a like a large thing that says that there's feral people in the smoky mountains and stuff like that and it's never been proven and there's no evidence to it and uh you know people when they lived here for years and years and years in the 1800s and 1900s and before that, such a isolated area that the people here just, they thought that like they were like, um, uh, just, I don't know how to describe it, like backwards, you know, you always get the thing that they're inbred, um, violent people have been thrown around a lot of times, um, and really, it's just salt to earth people, will give you a shirt off your back, just misunderstood and then that stereotype kept building and uh, just like anything else um people come to accept it as fact but um i've saw more stories of cool stuff and people helping people in appalachia than uh anywhere else but i'm sure there's good people other places but it doesn't get the stereotype that it deserves um so i love living here for the most part there's some issues with it with every place that you go but I mean, this is a life right here, just hanging out and being in nature in the woods. Um, so, well, that was my two cents. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. Unsolicited, um, you know, commentary. <laughs> I can't. All right, we should get a little fire going. So. Get down here and I just remembered I got something cool for Christmas. Well, kind of cool. I don't know. My wife got it for me. It's like a little fire starter thing and we'll try it out. I'm sure y'all seen this before. It's a little Zippo lighter and it's got uh, it looks like almost like a cotton ball here. You can probably replace it with cotton balls and you're supposed to thread it out a little bit where it gets fluffy and it builds up tender. Um so kind of cool. Um I don't know how much she paid for it, but emergency fire kit. I don't know. I just want to test it out, so we'll see how it happens. Got us a little fire going now. Some of it's a little wet, but it's okay.
You get sizzling with a lot of water in it. I don't reckon y'all ever build a campfire before, have you? <laughs> God, I'd say probably about another 30 minutes before it gets completely dark. I mean, I got a little tiny fire going. Keep it stoked up for most of the night. And uh, we'll get to cooking here in a little bit. Uh, yeah, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> Some come right through me. Jesus, I must see a lot of people. Mm. I figured while we're camping up here, we'd maybe make a meal to uh, honor the people that lived here, maybe some stuff that they had up here uh, with their homestead. So I'm gonna make some cornbread fritters and uh, I brought some uh, green beans my mom got out of the garden last year that's canned. It's probably something they'd have. And uh, <clears throat> while I'm not soaking beans, I bought some uh, uh, soup beans too. So that should be a good little meal. We're gonna make some cornbread and uh, we'll see how it goes. That little measly morsel over here. Let's eat in a minute. Didn't get anything out of it. That's all right. Try all there. First time I've ever done it. Put that right there. Go back and put some beans in here. Get us some beans going with my cornbread disaster in there. It just adds flavor, you know. My janky 9 on set can open. It's gonna bring my loss, but it's gonna kill me. Get it on the fire, get it warm. You're still hanging out back there. Keep snotting. These green beans are so hard to open. I should open the lid before I came. I'll have to work on it for a second. I'll get back to y'all. He's out there again. He's waiting for some green beans. I'll have to heat up the... Uh, Little guys out there. He's getting a little closer. They're everywhere. Making all kinds of mistakes tonight. Uh, I guess in retrospect, I should have dropped it a little bit, but uh, for a small fire I have, but we'll sit in the cold and they'll be warm here soon enough. We'll stir. Y'all make it look so easy online. Crazy. This happens every time I go camping though, so I ain't worried about it. Hope you ain't either. I couldn't for the life of me get those beans open. So we're gonna be having soup beans, a small piece of cornbread. That's life. Sometimes it just don't work out. We'll have them here soon. I said struggle to be funny a minute ago about that cornbread fiasco. <laughs> I actually had some more mule over there and didn't even see it, but it happens. But that's what the old pioneers up here did. Um, it's just a way of subsistence farming, living off the land. I'm sure that there was good times and hard times and they could eat what they got and uh, they're happy to have it. And uh, I'm happy to have every day what I eat. I know it sounds cliche, but uh, some people don't have anything. I'm very blessed to be able to sit here and eat these soup, beans, and cornbread and 
live another day. So we'll see. I'll tell you how it is. Very good. I think the fridge turned out good. A little oily. You all saw that, but it's good. So sit here and enjoy it and uh, we'll talk a little bit more action here in a minute. Sorry I keep sniffling as my nose is running off from the cold, but it's starting to get not fall here. Um, see over there, sun setting. Was set, so we were when the spooky time happens apparently, so we'll see. We didn't even need those green beans. This feels good enough. That's why I keep telling myself everybody. Anyway, <laughs> I'm a big fan of green beans. I like mustard greens too. Especially grown out of the garden. There's something different about them. These are pretty good too. Hit the spot. So many planes have come through here this evening. I've never heard so many planes in my life um, coming through here. I don't know where they're going. But, I mean, it's just constant. It's a Wendango. These poor deer are everywhere. <clears throat> you don't realize how these poor deer are everywhere. You don't realize how alone you are until these woods are dead quiet. You can hear them walking over there everywhere. Then you hear one of those things snap on a twig. You're like, oh, what was that? But he's going to come right in the cave, I think. Big one. He's following me. Anyway. Heard so many coyotes howling up here tonight. Um, we've got a few recordings of them, but uh, seem like they get a little bit closer every hour. They'll call up, and uh, it's pretty wild to hear. Uh, I've heard coyotes before, but it seems like there's a lot of them. Uh, so that's kind of cool to hear. Um, and there's so many deer and stuff around here. There, something's moving in the bushes every which way, and it's just they just keep doing it. <laughs> it's, it's pretty wild. I've never saw heard this many like wildlife roaming through a camp before um, This place is kind of it's a little unsettling. I mean, I, I get a little bit creeped out here, but nothing too bad um, I think it's just because I haven't done this in a, in a long long time since I was a kid that uh, It's my first night soul camping and a place that's haunted and plus it's freezing out here so all those mixed in just makes for a a weird time so we're gonna keep going through it though hopefully i don't know we'll, we'll see if i last the night i don't know i could be a wimp um so but yeah <clears throat> i'm reading this log book from people that have stayed here and uh to see if there's anything creepy or something that went on here while they stayed here but Everybody keeps talking about how nice the privy was, and the privy was pretty nice. So if you ever come up here, check it out, and uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised because I was. And it happened the first like minute I got up here, I was like, oh, I gotta go to the bathroom.
and dad not number one. <clears throat> Figure we make us some coffee real quick. I love these little Stanley cups. Not the crazy ones, or the fashion trend ones, but I like their stuff and stuff. Get a good little mount in there. Probably too much, but all right, let that thing seep a little bit, steep. We might have some good coffee. If you want an honest review of my coffee, it is absolutely terrible. <laughs> but that's what I get for keeping it in the car for uh, a month before I decide to uh, use it. I thought I was going to camp in earlier than this. So, that being said, <laughs> I'm still going to drink it, but it is not, not the best. Not the best. Well, a little still. A little still. Around uh, 15 minutes to midnight, I got my sleeping bag here, and uh, kind of tired. Nothing's happened yet. Um, but we'll see how we. It's very cold. But other than that, we'll see if we can tough it out. So uh, I'll wake you up and let you know if we have any updates. Thanks. There's just everything like uh, there's popping and cracking everywhere, and like I guess there's a piece of tin underneath here and everything. Have an animal hits it, it scares the absolute crap out of me. So I jolt up. I'm just not used to uh, sleeping out like this where it's open, at least in a tent. You can kind of, I don't know, it gives you a false safe sense of security. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. If I'm being completely honest with you guys, I think I'm going to pack it up and uh, take the creepy walk back down to my car. Um, I'm a little bit chilled. And I'm shivering a little bit. My fire went out too early. I'm a little spooked for some reason. I don't know. Something just seems off here. Uh, so I'm going to trust my instincts. I'm probably just being a wimp and maybe it's probably nothing. But I'm going to hike back down the trail and uh, we're going to do it in the dark. So that's going to be creepy, but uh, we're going to do it anyway. So. Come join me on that, and I'm sorry I failed you guys but not staying all night, but uh, it's always the next time. When it warms up, I think I'll be able to do it, but I don't know. You know it's got a weird, weird spooky feeling being here. Uh, it's probably because I haven't done it in years, but who knows, but I'm going to trust my instincts and go home, lay in a warm bed, drink some good coffee, and uh, yeah, so let's see what we can do about getting back down the thing. I don't know if I'm just spooking myself out or what, but it seems to me like going down is more terrifying than stuffing out here or not, but I think I'm going to try to go down. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Goodbye, Sarver Hall. You got the best of me. I think we got everything. I hope, because I'm not coming back for it.
this is where we came. And we want this wall over here. There's all stone stacks. Do raccoon hunting, raccoon hunting, not do this. It'd be terrifying. <clears throat> Going down should be a lot easier than coming up, though. Hopefully. The creepy Blair Witch. Karen. Let's see, how did we get up? Not quite remember. It was over here though. Make a good story anyway. Oh shit. Oh, 
back on the trail. Still not out of the woods yet. <laughs> Down through there. Oh. Got a lot of lessons to not. One, a lot better lots, a longer battery life. Two, it's come a little bit more prepared. Three, don't get so spooked, but I guess it's human nature. I also got a little spooked. Um, I didn't record it on video, so you're just gonna have to take my word for it. Um, didn't record it, but I'm not trying to deceive anybody or say something's creepier than it is or whatnot. But uh, a few minutes I got up and walked around, uh, toyed with like restarting the fire <clears throat> right before I said I got spooked, whatnot. Something sounded, and there had been deer around that campsite the whole night just walking around stuff and raccoons, you can hear them chirping off in the thing so it didn't bother me at all or anything, but something sounded like it come from the top of the mountain and was walking like a human with heavy boots on, just running as fast as it could, like stomping through the underbrush, like just breaking trees and stuff. And there was a bush off behind the shelter about... I don't know, like 50 feet away or something. And when it got there, it just stopped. And it just gave me the weirdest feeling for some reason. Could be nothing, probably is nothing. Uh, but I tried to flush it out and I put a light on it. I couldn't see it. I kept trying to like stand there to see if it'd walk around or what, cause I thought it was a bear at first. But then when I cut my light out, it would take a few steps and then stop again. And it never did come out of that bush, so I have no idea what it was. And uh, compiled with that, with all the stories that I'd read before about uh, a ghost named George. Uh, so the story goes with that is down at the homestead, that little hog crib, corn crib we saw. Uh, people used to camp out there all the time when they are coming off the Appalachian Trail. And there was all these, uh, I forgot the name of the whiskey, but it had some, the name of George in it somewhere. And people camped around, but at night, they said that they'd hear somebody walking through the woods with a cane that sounded like it was tapping on the leaves. Thank y'all so much for joining me on that little adventure. It wasn't the outcome I quite wanted to happen, but uh, it happens. Uh, we'll try it again here in a few weeks when it warms up. Maybe stay overnight again. Um, I'm not really used to sleeping in those shelters where they're open. And uh, I don't know, it just kind of... Uh, it was cold in there for one. I need a little bit better gear and I started shivering a little bit and I didn't want to really make a fire when I was just like an hour hike down from my car. Uh, it'd been different if I was camping out on the trail or something that wasn't close to my car, but that and uh, I just need a little bit better gear, uh, some better pants and stuff like that. I think sleeping in a tent would have helped me because I'd been closed in and um, wouldn't think about what's outside in that little <laughs> opening. I was always scared like a bear or something walk up on me, which is probably irrational, but. So since all those whiskey balls there, they named the ghost George, and there were some reports, which I couldn't see somebody actually saying this happen, but that the ghost would shake him awake at night. So I don't know if it's old folklore, it probably is, and no tales to tell behind the story, or the campfire to scare kids and scare other people, but, uh, that whole night I was sitting there, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was like, I'm gonna wake up in this open air shelter and I'm gonna see him standing over top of me and the thought of that just, just terrified me just a little bit. Homestead in that dark wasn't that creepy, it was just the thought, I don't know, I just couldn't get it out of my head. There's some other reports online of people saying that they heard like people, like kids, uh, 
kids like laughing and stuff in the woods like that but i think that's probably all hearsay but they did say that there's some weird sounds and stuff up there which i can attribute a lot of that or almost all that to like uh animals and deer the amount of deer walking around there was insane so i'm sure it was something like that but just on the off chance that there was i don't know i got it in my head that it was creepy Somebody also reported there, like, sound like there was a blow humming sound the whole time you sat there and just unsettling feeling. And I did get that unsettled feeling. I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't explain it. Uh, maybe I'm just chicken. You, you never know. It's probably it. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I don't know. It's just strange, strange place there at night. So everybody in the logbook said it was very peaceful and, you know, they had a good night's sleep there. Of course, they probably hiked like 10 miles and was dead to the world. Um, so, yeah. And one other thing happened when I was coming down the trail, and I did catch this on, on camera, but you can barely hear it, and I don't really want to post it because I'm afraid somebody will be like, oh, well, that was just your uh, backpack or something rubbing when you took the audio, and I promise you it wasn't. So the hike down was pretty mundane. Uh, it was a little creepy going through like the woods and stuff down there in the trail because the trail dipped straight down. But I started hearing water in this bend when I was about halfway down and something sounded like it was sawing a log just sawing away like an old like hand saw on wood and i can't think of the life of me for whatever any kind of animal that would make that sound it would sound like it was just sawing 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 away and then it stopped and then i walked a little bit further and it sounded like it was doing it again so i clicked on my light and shined it over into the bushes and it immediately stopped and it was terrifying um <laughs> I think I cussed a little bit on the film. I was like, what is that? And, and not so distinct words. Um, and then it's just like a feeling of like fear and dread come over me. And like I had to make myself keep walking across that bend to get into the flatland. And once I got out of that area and walked probably another 100 yards or something like that, that feeling just went away and it was fine. But it was strange. I, I, I don't know. I can't describe it. Or, well, I have no idea what it is. So... Um, if y'all know an animal that makes a sound that sounds like it's sawing, uh, let me know. I talked to, uh, some people, um, about it and they said maybe an owl, but it, it definitely wasn't an owl. I heard owls on my off. Um, and I thought that I was pretty accustomed to every sound in the, uh, you know, forest around here, but that's a new one on me and just that feeling of just, uh, fear i don't know i don't get that a lot in the woods uh, especially during the day i'm out and about all the time uh but it's just, it's just strange i don't know so uh, let me know if you know what that is maybe set my my mind at ease a little bit because i still think it's super weird at this point i didn't even really get to talk about the history of the place because it's fascinating um the sarvers built that community up there and right before the civil war in the 1850s um a guy named henry sarver and his brother and they made it and then they all went off the war and his brother got killed during Pickett's charge in Gettysburg. And they come back after the war, raised the family, uh, Henry did, and they just farmed the land up there. You saw all the rock cans and all the cleared land and those uh, old stone chimneys that set up there. And uh, people actually lived there until the 50s. Uh, there's a lot of good articles online about it. Um, and then the people that lived there in the 50s, descendants of them, uh, just got so old that, and sick that they moved on out to where there was uh, better roads and stuff like that. And uh, it eventually fell into ruin, become part of the National Forest, and, and that's what happened with it. There's a cemetery um, on up the, the mountain we were going to go to, but it, we have to do that when we go back. Uh, apparently, some of the uh, his children and wife is buried up there, and uh, I don't know. It's kind of peaceful down there next to where the own homestead is. I thought it's just I don't know. I can't describe it. Why? Why I walked off the mountain? Um, it wasn't really that big of a creepy walk down, except that part was sawing. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if y'all had any weird experiences up there or something I'm missing. Let me know. Um, I might have just got in my head a little bit. Um, <laughs> it does that happen often, but I mean, I'm human too. Uh, so yeah, thank y'all so much for watching this video and, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to do YouTube and make longer videos and not be so awkward. So 
we'll get there it might take me a few tries um <laughs> but thank y'all so much for staying with me and uh on tiktok and on youtube and um i'm glad i got some followers and stuff like that and i enjoy getting out and making these videos i mean i know i'm not gonna get rich off of it or anything like that but uh i, I do enjoy making it and uh thank y'all for all your positive comments and uh love you guys and we'll see you on the next one hopefully hopefully we won't get scared off the mountain again we'll see y'all